Hello students, welcome back to our channel. Students, in this video, we are going to study about a very important device which is called Sigmo Manometer. Sigmo Manometer is a device which is used to measure blood pressure. We will study about the various types of Sigmo Manometers, the parts of the Sigmo Manometer and the working. How does it work? How it measures the blood pressure? So, let's start. First of all, we will study the various types of Sigmo Manometer. First one is the Mercury Sigmo Manometer. This is the Mercury Sigmo Manometer. You all must have seen this with a doctor. This is one of the most common Sigmo Manometers which are used to monitor the blood pressure. And why is it called the Mercury Sigmo Manometer? Because the pressure is measured using a mercury column. This is a mercury column and the height of the mercury in this column gives the pressure. So, we will discuss uh, about all those things. This is the most accurate Sigmo manometer of all the devices that are present. So, it is treated as a gold standard. The mercury Sigmo manometer is considered the gold standard among all other types of devices representing the classic and time tested method of assigning blood pressure. So, this is called the gold standard one. The device consists of an inflated bladder along with a column of mercury. So, this is this is an inflated bladder and this you can see is a column of mercury. We will see the working and function of all these parts. Wearing pressure causes different levels of mercury in the column. Now, if you connect this, this is this is called the cuff. If you connect this cuff to the arm of a patient, so, uh, by changing the pressure in the cuff, you can see that the mercury will go up and down in this column and using that height, you, you can see the markings which are over here. So, uh, we will see the height of the mercury in the column and that height gives us the pressure. And without going into the deeper aspects because that is the topic of physics, that how the height of the mercury can give the pressure in the blood. So, we are not going into that, but the height of the mercury in this column gives the pressure. And once, once it is made, we do not need to calibrate it again and again to get the readings. That, that is the best part of mercury sigmo manometer. Other, other manometers that we are going to see uh, in few moments, they, they, they must be calibrated every now and then because they start giving different readings or wrong readings. So, that, that is not the case with it. So, this is the best Sigmo manometer that is available. The other type is the aneroid Sigmo manometer and this is the design Then you can see the aneroid Sigmo manometer is a device that stands out on the stand or walls consists of a spring device and metal membrane that translates the signal from cuff and operates a needle in the gauge. So, you all have seen this type of manometer also. There is there is a membrane, there is a, there, this is, this is a pressure meter, a analog pressure meter which is used to measure the pressure. In the mercury sigmo manometer, the pressure was measured using the height of the mercury in the column, but here we have, we directly have a analog meter in which a needle is connected and there are readings in the circular manner and that needle will give the pressure. The absence of liquid provides mobility as this device can be moved easily from one location to another. So, one of the advantages of this aneroid manometer is that it is, it is more portable as compared to the mercury sigmo manometer because there is no liquid in this. Mercury, you, we all know that mercury is in liquid form. So, that makes it a bit difficult for sigmo, mercury sigmo manometer to, to carry it from one location to another because the mercury that, that the column can be damaged, the mercury column can be damaged, but that is not the case with it. You can carry it wherever you want to go and this makes it a better when, when it comes to the mobility part. But since these devices require calibration checks, that's why they provide imprecise results. The needle has to be kept to zero before its use. The accurate results are possible by frequent calibration. So, frequent calibrations are required to get the desired result to get the correct results. And the last one is the digital Sigmo manometer. This is the most common for household purposes. 
many people have their houses even i am having this <laughs> at my house so this gives us a digital reading this this cuff is wrapped on the arm of the patient and then the button is pressed so the pressure is changed in this cuff and the reading is obtained according to that pressure but this is the least precise so doctors do not prefer it but since uh, everyone cannot use this type of manometer or the mercury manometer so this is easy to use that's why we all have kept this sigma manometer at, at our homes but this does not give the accurate reading as, as given by this one and the most accurate is given by the mercury sigma manometer now let's discuss about the parts of sigma manometer the most important part is the bladder bladder an inflatable bag is used to compress the arm to obstruct the artery bladders must have particular dimension criteria to ensure full arterial compression okay where is the bladder bladder is inside this cuff and the bladder is wrapped on the arm of the patient and bladder bladder is used to compress the arm if you have used this manometer you know that when this cuff which has a bladder inside it is wrapped on the arm then the arm is compressed that is to increase the pressure in the artery and and to make the pressure more than the blood pressure which is there in the artery so we will see how it works and this bladder which you cannot see in this diagram this bladder is inside this this blue wala part and that is called the cuff the bladder is held in place by a cuff around arm during the measurement the cuff must be designed properly in terms of positioning and position to provide an accurate measurement so positioning of this cuff is very important around the arm to get the accurate measurement now the third part is the manometer which is the which is which is in this part is this mercury column that is the manometer anything which reads the pressure that is called the manometer right and the next one is the valve and the bulb this is the bulb which is used to uh, used to pump air in the cuff or in the bladder so that the pressure can be achieved when the desired pressure is there and we now have to release the pressure then this valve is used to get the air out of the bladder so that the pressure can be decreased now let's see how can we use the sigma manometer to get the pressure reading so what we do we wrap this cuff on the arm of the patient and then we squeeze this bladder squeeze this bulb to create or increase the pressure in the bladder now we have to increase the pressure to such an extent that the pressure in the bladder becomes more than the pressure in the artery so generally the pressure is increased up to 180 mm of mercury now there are two types of pressures of the blood one is called the systolic pressure and one is called the diastolic pressure now in one cycle of the heart heart first contracts and then relaxes so the pressure of the heart when it contracts that is called the systolic pressure and the pressure of the heart when it relaxes that is called the diastolic pressure obviously the reading of the systolic pressure is always greater than the diastolic pressure so what we have to do we have to pump air in this bladder so that the pressure increases very much higher than the systolic pressure so generally the pressure is increased up to 180 mm of hg now slowly the uh, valve is opened and the pressure is decreased in the bladder and <clears throat> one stethoscope is also used to listen to the sounds of the blood in the artery systolic pressure is the pressure where the first sound is heard and then the pressure is lowered 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 and the diastolic pressure is the pressure where when the last sound of the blood is heard in the artery so that's how doctors take reading using this so let's read out the various steps use the properly sized bp cuff and the length of the cuff's bladder should be at least equivalent to 80% of the circumference of your upper arm this has to be taken care of wrap the cuff around your upper arm and lightly press the stethoscope's bell over the brachial artery just below the cliff's edge inflate the sigmomanometer to 180 mm hg 
slowly release air by mildly turning the air valve and observing the pressure drop listen with the stethoscope and simultaneously notice notice the mercury gauge the first sound you hear via stethoscope that will determine the systolic blood pressure continue to watch the pressure drop when you no longer hear any sound that will be the diastolic blood pressure so these were the various types of sphygmomanometers their types their parts their working so i hope everything is clear i'll meet you in the next lecture till then all the best